Here's how they line up for the third and final race from Telfo for the BNC V8s. Reverse Greta, Nick Ross and Andy Booth and all hold in front row. Simon Richards and John Penny for a Ford second row. We then filter back through to Christina All West there and Hayden McKenzie. Then Martin Short, he's going to be a big mover in this race, no doubt. Next door to him, Dean Perkins. Starting out of position nine, it's Eddie Bell alongside Andy Knight, the two Christchurch drivers. They started the weekend side by side. Then it's Craig Beard and Tim Edgell alongside each other. Scott McLaughlin, Andrew Anderson, a pair of Holden Commodores back there. Then Angus Fogg and Paul Manuel. Blinding run so far in that Holden Commodore. Angus Fogg still the championship leader. Go to John McIntyre and Kane Scott. Jason Barguana and David Hopper. Barguana is the points leader for the round. Matt Lockwood completes the lineup. Well, at the beginning of the weekend, the top four in the championship are covered by just 113 points. Heading into the third and final race here, the reverse gritter, the all important reverse gritter. The top four in the championship are covered by just 72 points, Mark Pedersen. Anything can happen. Still a round to go, but boy, talk about drama. You've got to live this one through, Jamie. Like you say, there's going to be drama aplenty because as Angus Fogg just said, it depends how many Vs the guys in front have had as to how silly they're going to be because we've seen it before when all the fast guys are at the front, we get to turn one. There's been mayhem, so throw in a couple of guys that don't have as much car speed. A lot of guys trying to get around the outside in turn one, so I can't predict this. One thing I'm pretty confident of, that if Andy Booth does get a clean getaway uh, and can go into turn one in first place, he's going to be a very hard man to beat in that grid position. Yeah, it's some mechanical dramas in race number two to put him off the front row alongside Nick Ross. Jason Barguana leading the round points on 135. John McIntyre second on 134. Kane Scott third on 129. Angus Fogg leads the championship by 27 points over Kane Scott. Craig Baird third, 40 points down on Foggy with Johnny Mack now within 72 points of the championship lead. The top four covered by less than one race win. It is all about to happen here at Taupo in front of a packed house under the sunny skies. An all hold in front row. Who's it going to be at the end of this one as we build into the ITM 400 at Hamilton? Get ready to rock and roll. It erupts off the start line. Gosh, it's a pretty scrappy start. Look at that five abreast. This is not going to work. Craig Beer looks like he's folded right back to the uh, last position. So something's gone wrong with that United Video Car already. Here we go. Who is going to fold first? Yeah, well, Craig Baird was from grid position 13, so he didn't get a great start at all. No, so either way, that car is out of the picture. So he was second third in the championship he won't be after this race here we go dust look, look for the dive down the inside here oh, Scott, Scott McLaughlin to the wide. outside what has happened to Craig Beard he still hasn't come into shot on board with McLaughlin again running wide that was out of five to six under breaks to seven he's trying to find a uh, an area of the track that he can get in and work with because at the moment he's get a bit dry Craig Beard is parked on the side of the racetrack so third in the points having issues already inside the first lap of the 20 lap finale here at Taupo on board with John McIntyre up the inside of Jason Barguana at nine. These guys will just contest this all the way up through turn 10 here into 11. Jason Barguana still in the box seat because he's got the inside running. Timmy Edgell was just up ahead of them as McLaughlin goes to the inside of Christina or West. Eddie Bell's going to follow him through as well. Yeah just looking back a little bit further down the field we saw that battle going on and uh quite possible that Kane Scott may have got the inside of Johnny McIntyre. There's Craig Beard getting pushed off to the side of the racetrack, so his race is over. Nick Ross leads from Andy Booth. Simon Richards in the third position. Then it's John Penny, Martin Short, Scott McLaughlin. Did McLaughlin start, grid position 15. What a blinder of the first lap from the youngster. As said before the start of this race, he's just got to muscle it in with these guys now, and uh, let his intentions aren't very early. It's exactly what he's done. He's Angus Fogg in behind Andy Anderson alongside Paul Manuel. Andy Knight carrying some front bonnet damage to the front of the Century Batteries Ford. On board with Kane Scott. That's Matt Lockwood just up ahead. John McIntyre immediately ahead of him. Nick Ross continuing to lead from Booth. Richards, Penny, Short, McLaughlin, Bell, All West Anderson. And it's a big stack up and behind them now. Was that Dean Perkins just dropping some fluid down on the racetrack? Uh, they get a bit scrappy, isn't it, these guys? It's just Taupo for you. It, uh, it creates some very dynamic racing at the best of times. But you see Jason Barguana starting to get a little bit impatient. Back of Andy Knight's car. There's Craig there Beard. He's back in the pits. So out of third in the points, it's going to be a big points loss here for Craig Beard. 
We don't know what's happened, but he failed to take the throttle at the start and fell right back through to the tail of the field, and I don't think he even made turn one. Well, Simon Bridge is going very wide there. Actually, the guys behind him too far back, but this is where we're going to see all of the manoeuvres take place. Coming into turn 11, because then it just leads into a bit of a drag strip. Angus Fogg in 11th place. Now, on board with Kane Scott. Let's see where Craig Beard comes from. And this stage is going to come on the pitch. It's going very slow right there. Foggy's gone left. There he is there. Right, but just not accelerating as quick as what he uh, we would expect. But either way, he's shuffled right back. We saw in that picture before he's still in the car, and Kinnick's looking underneath. So either way, he is out of this race. So Nick Ross, Andy Booth, Simon Richards, still your top three. Angus Fogg, certainly one of the big movers. He's gone to the inside of Christina Orwest as McLaughlin. And sure, they're battling for the rookie title in the championship. And they're running together on the racetrack. At the moment, the rookie honours are to the man in the picture there, Scott McLaughlin. He is on 510 points in the championship. Mark Short, 464, so 40 odd points behind him. Mark Short with the Battery Town colours on this weekend on the zone four. It's almost got a bit of a uh, Waikato Chiefs feel to it, that race car, with the car being based down in uh, that sort of area out in Pyro. John Penny continuing to have a strong run. Eddie Bell would have to be a lot happier with the weekend that he's had in the Independent Fisheries Ford. Yeah, but he's still capable of winning races that we do know, so the right must say he'll be happy, but he certainly won't be jubilant about finishing it thereabouts in the top 10. He'd much rather be at the front. John McIntyre, 16th. Kane Scott, 17th. Oh, Tommy Edgel. Tommy Edgel, was that just a break? The lock-up maybe into nine. Andy Knight's going to pick up the opportunity to go by as McLaughlin launches down the inside at 11 on Martin Shaw. Nice, clean pass. Holden versus Ford and the two youngsters battling for the rookie title. Changing yes. positions. All right, Scott McLaughlin will just defend that as much as he can. A bit further back. You see a Tommy Edgel car still circulating, so maybe... Bit of tyre smoke, whatever, but behind him, he has got the championship contenders, Johnny McIntyre and Payne Scott, who are on board with right now. Well, there's just three of the Fab Four left out there on the racetrack with the demise of Craig Beard in the early laps. Knight, and just a hint of a brake lock-up for him. Ahead of Christina Orr West, Timmy Edgel, John Mack. Payne Scott, Paul Manuel. Manuel was so impressive in that second race run. McIntyre 13th, Kane Scott 14th, Angus Fogg up ahead in the ninth position. So, more importantly for Angus, that is a gain in championship points. This is a stage, but of course there's plenty of racing to go, but what we've seen time and time again with these reverse grid races, as the more competitive guys start getting through the field. Oh, there we go. Christina Orr just about lost it in front of Kane Scott. Now, Kane Scott's made the pass. Andrew Anderson getting past here by Angus Fogg. So Angus Fogg has extended over Kane Scott out to 37 points. It's a 10-point gain with Foggy ninth, McIntyre, Kane Scott in 14th. In fact, it's a 12-point gain. Yeah, actually, Angus Fogg just got in front of Andrew Anderson there for the eighth place, but he'll be making inroads. But as I was saying, once these guys start battling it in the, the company they've been battling with all weekend, those passing maneuvers are few and far between. But Scott McLaughlin inside of John Penny here. Should get this completed off the exit of turn 11. McLaughlin on the move. He certainly is. Uh, Save the best for last. 37.9. He's one of the fastest drivers on track too. There's only three drivers in the 37s. Angus Fogg is one of them. Now, he did get in the back of John Penny a little bit. Now, whether that will come under the attention of the judicial boys, I wouldn't have thought so, but uh, anything can happen. Interestingly, Jamie, before the start of the race, we went for a bit of a walk, and some of the teams are opting to install the water brake systems that they've got for these cars. And what it does, it fires a very fine mist of water into the braking mechanisms and helps bring down the temperature. So these cars are working overtime in the brake department. Some go. Scott McLaughlin has been released now up to third place. Holden's one, wow. two, and three with Nick Ross leading, but Scott McLaughlin is one of the fastest drivers on track. Looks like the message will be given to uh, through to Angie Booth that Scott McLaughlin's on a charge because the last lap for Andy Booth, a 37.7. Race leader at the moment, Nick Ross, on a 38.0. So the message comes through to those boys that Scott's coming. Fastest lap, a 37.0 so for John McIntyre. The ah, now there's fluid coming out the back of the car. Now I alluded to a couple of corners ago, a couple of laps before that, some of the cars installed the uh, water brake systems. Yep. They actually was one of the teams that installed the water brakes. So that's just residual water, not petrol, nothing else. I just hope that the officials understand what's coming out of that car. 
It's going to dry up very quickly at one teed on anybody. Let's just hope they don't bring that car in. A mechanical drive through. Nick Ross, Andy Booth. Oh, Tim Edgell. He stops by the side so of the racetrack. The smoke we saw was mechanical. And it's become terminal. Possibly a rear end. We, we don't know. Andy Booth continues to chase down Nick Ross with a fast closing Scott McLaughlin. Now looking for the championship. Angus Fogg now up into eighth. John McIntyre 11th. Kane Scott in 13th. So again, still a gain there for Angus Fogg. McIntyre back in 11th. It's a nine point gain for Angus Fogg. So the lead out to 36 points. Now, if you wanted to know why Andy Booth has all of a sudden picked the pace up, the answer is Nick Ross, Andy Booth, last lap times respectively, a 138.2, 38.0. Here we go, Andy Knight slowing. Yeah, he's got some damage to the front end. He's gone off somewhere and it's filled the front of the race couple of dirt. It's John McIntyre and Andy Anderson dispute through turn number two. Come back to those lap times. We watch uh, McIntyre trying to get around Andy Anderson, but up ahead, Andy Knight having some issues before that. But oh, John Penny going John around. John Penny going around in the Penny Homes forward, so it's really starting to happen. We haven't even got to the halfway mark of the final race here at Talpo. Now, was he helped? Here's the big Andy Freeze replay. This is on board with John McIntyre. This will be Andy Knight locking a break to the inside of Andy Anderson, who's given them the big, don't argue, and he skated off down through the grass, down the hill, through the carousel. Carry on as if nothing ever happened. It's JP up at turn number five. So Nick yeah. Ross continues to lead. So going back to those lap times. We alluded to, yeah. Scott McLaughlin last lap time, a 137.1. So he's essentially circulating a second lap quicker than these two guys here. Here comes Andy Booth. Nick Ross almost stopping on the back straight. Yeah, that, that looked all too easy, didn't it? Now, Nick won't, doesn't know how to give up, I should say. So he'll contest this all the way through 12, 13, and 14. So Andy Booth takes over the front running in the Rock FM Holden. Nick Ross back to second, but Scott McLaughlin making huge amounts of ground in third. Because Andy Anderson still got John McIntyre and Kane Scott bottled up behind. Lots of dirt and debris down there through that last sequence of corners. So Angus Fogg now up to seventh. McIntyre tenth. Kane Scott eleventh. Still a nine-point gain, 36-point lead for Angus Fogg in the championship. Andy Anderson, he's had a much better weekend in the ITM Holden. So Anderson running in the ninth position, still trying to fend off John McIntyre. He's got to run up the inside this time. Kane Scott's going to follow him through. Yeah, the freight train will come through here, but one man that is struggling to get through the traffic, although he has won a race this weekend, is Jason Barguana, still back in 13th position. Oh, he's not too far behind this group of race cars. Andy Booth is still your race leader out in front, so... McIntyre finally gets around Andy Anderson. So does Kane Scott on board with Kane Scott looking back at the ITM Holden. So John McIntyre, that should see him up into the ninth position. Kane Scott, tenth. Angus Fogg still in the seventh position. Those are the three we're watching for the championship approaching half race distance. Third final race for the BNC V8s from Telfo. Don't go away. We'll be back with more after this. So Booth leads from Nick Ross, Scott McLaughlin. Here's John McIntyre and Kane Scott. Just five points separate them for the round victory. Scott second in the championship and John McIntyre looking to move into third overall with the demise of Craig Beard. And Angus Fogg still with the advantage here, Mark. It is, and it doesn't matter how many car places he finishes in front of uh, Angus Fogg, sorry, Kane Scott and Johnny McIntyre, so long as he does that, that's the main thing, because he'll gain a couple of points by doing so. And then, of course, the battle is going to come down to the ITM 400 in Hamilton in a few weeks' time, but man in the picture here, Nick Ross. We saw Andy Booth get past him before, but Andy Booth hasn't pulled away. And of course, the man that is on a charge here is the car aboard now, which is Scott McLaughlin.